Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for part two of behavior-based feeding for snakes. In this presentation, I am going to do what I promise will be a not too long review of what we talked about in part one, and then we're gonna see some actual video footage of snakes. And I have them set up to compare the same snake when they're not hungry versus when they're hungry. And I'm really hoping that that's gonna be helpful for you all. This is our review. I want to remind you that when we are talking about feeding based on behavior, we're talking about a totality of circumstances that we're looking at. So we're looking at the snake and we are asking ourselves that whole list of things we talked about in part one, like how long has it been since their last meal? How much exercise have they gotten since they last ate? Have they eliminated since their last meal? What was the size and type of their last meal? What is their behavior like now? And here are some questions that are gonna help guide us when we get to that part where we're asking what is their behavior like now in conjunction with all of those other factors that I just mentioned. And I always get this question too. When I say that I look at behavior and I look at whether the snake is in their ambush posture or not, whatever is typical for their species, I get people that tell me, well, my snake is in that ambush position every night or every day, or they're always, acting like they're hungry. And I would venture to guess that they're not necessarily acting like they're hungry and they really need to eat, but that they're displaying an innate species typical ambush posture out of habit and also because they're opportunistic predators and they aren't gonna really usually refuse a meal if one happens to come by, but they aren't necessarily always starving and looking for a meal unless they're in an area of the, that meals are few and far between and they don't have a lot of resources. So let's answer these questions. What if your snake is in ambush posture or hunting position most of the time? Well, I would ask you this. When they're in that species typical ambush pos position or that species typical ambush posture, are they sleeping in that position? Because I've actually had snakes get in their ambush position and been asleep. No matter what I do in front of them, they don't budge. They don't act like they see me or see any motion or see anything. They are just sitting there and I literally think that they're resting in that position. Or are they otherwise non-reactive when they're in this position? And by non-reactive, I mean, they're aware that you're there and you may walk by the enclosure and they might slowly look at you, but they're not really, reacting in any kind of big way. So they're pretty much just sitting there in that ambush position or hanging there in that ambush position and they're not doing anything else. All right, the next question then is the opposite. If they're not sleeping or they're not sitting there or buried there or hanging there in a non-reactive manner, are they coming towards any and all movement? making really slight, fast head movements in response to activity? Are they moving their eyes in response to motion? Are they vibrating their body tensely in anticipation of striking? Because that's different. Then they probably are looking for a meal. And let me give you an example with my Morelia Bradley Ronan, who's pictured here on the left. He comes out literally almost every single night and he roams around activity stations and exercise areas and the general room and then he usually comes to rest on this particular activity station and he gets in what is the species typical ambush position for Morelia Bradley which is hanging down from a branch or a shelf or ledge or maybe out of a rock crevice they s the front part of their body and they look down at the ground waiting for prey to move underneath he does this every night and every night I move the activity station while he's on it because it's on wheels and I move it around the room a lot. Dogs are running back and forth. I'm walking back and forth. I'm sometimes taking things off the activity station to use for other snakes and putting them back on. And there's a lot of commotion going on and he doesn't react whatsoever. He just stays like you see him here. I mean, he's aware of what's going on. Occasionally he might look in a direction of something happening but he's very non-reactive and his body posture, although it's an ambush posture, his body tone is relaxed. 
It's not super tense. And then on nights when I know that he really wants to eat, he comes out of his enclosure and there's very little roaming around. He pretty much goes directly to the activity station. He gets an ambush posture and it's a really tense ambush posture. And he is hyper vigilant to any and all movement around him. His head will move quickly in the direction of movement. His eyes will dart around. And if he thinks that food's coming near him, he tenses his body up so much that it vibrates and you can just see the tension building like a spring um, coiling up so that it's ready to let loose. And then I know, all right, he came out tonight, not just for exercise, not just for curiosity, not just to roam around and explore and then sit the rest of the night, but he came out tonight with the intent of finding something to eat. And so there's the difference. Our, our royal pythons, our python regis, we have one male and one female and their ambush postures are totally different. The male's ambush posture is exactly what you see here in Ronan. He gets up high on a ledge and he hangs the front part of his body down and he coils it in this S shape and he waits really tensely for food to pass underneath him. And I can tell on nights when he's not really hungry and probably wouldn't eat if I offered because motion around his enclosure or underneath him, like if I'm gonna change out water, doesn't really get any reaction from him. But if I'm gonna check on him and he's in this ambush posture and I even go to open the door and he starts to come towards the door or he un his neck to get lower to the ground to see what I'm doing, I know that he's probably hungry. And then our female Python Regis, she comes up to the door and she sits in a cave near the door and the front part of her body comes out of the cave and sort of hovers in this S shape and she stares at the door waiting for food to come by. And when she does that, I know she's hungry and her body looks really tense and it almost vibrates at any motion that comes by the enclosure where normally she goes and sits in that cave in the evening and she'll just rest her head on the cave opening and look out. But she doesn't put the front part of her body out in an S shape and tensely wait for something to come by. Another question that you might ask is do they dart up towards the door, down from their perch, out of hiding, out from underneath the substrate, or any of those things when you come close to the habitat? So you might walk by several times and get no reaction. You might be able to open the door and spot clean. You might be able to open the door and refill water and do other things. And the snake is aware that you're there, but they don't react really. They don't come towards the door or towards the top of the habitat. They don't come at you. They're just aware of you. But if they are coming towards the door before you even get it open, or they're coming at you when you go to do the water, that's a clue that they're probably in feed mode and it's probably because they're hungry. And then are they extending the time spent in that position or changing locations more than usual? While it's very species typical for Ronin species to be in this hanging down ambush position every night, and I believe he does it out of habit, it's not typical for him to go and do this in several locations around the room all in one night. And it's not typical for him to do it all day long and all night, or to stay up longer than usual doing it, or to wake up earlier in the day and start doing it. So if you start seeing that behavior outside of the normal time when they do it, or in various um, new locations or additional locations, it's probably because they're trying to increase their opportunity to find prey. So if they're moving around more, if they're changing their ambush locations, if they're actively hunting more, if they're a colubrid, then probably they're just trying to increase their chances of finding food. And they do that as well when they're awake outside of their normal awake times. It's gonna increase their chances of finding food if instead of just being awake during the day, they're awake at night or vice versa. I also want to remind you that we've talked about a lot of behaviors during this review as well as in the previous part of the course and that I realize and you need to realize all of those behaviors we mentioned can indicate that possibly something else is wrong. There might be something wrong with the environment inside the snake's habitat. There might be something wrong with the snake's health. 
But if you've eliminated any environmental issues inside the snake's habitat, like the heater's not going crazy and frying them, and that's why they want out, or that's why they're frantically moving around so much, and you've eliminated health issues, like you know you have a healthy snake, they get regular exams, regular fecal checks, you know that your source of food is decent, and then you know that the animal's habitat is good to go and it's within parameters. Then that's when you start looking at the totality of all of these other behaviors and thinking, yeah, it's probably time to feed my snake. They're behaving in this manner, they're doing these things. I look at the cage card and it's been a reasonable amount of time since they were last fed and they've been really active or yes, they've eliminated and I found a feces in the enclosure that was probably their last meal. All of those things together tell me, okay, we're gonna feed this snake. Or if you're my hognose snake, Hazel, you just come out of hiding and you start pushing on the glass door or pacing the glass door. And when uh, your caretaker doesn't pay attention to you, then you start climbing and doing behaviors that are really outside the realm of what's considered species typical. And you perch on a PVC perch at the door and you stare at your keeper until they open the door and feed you. Now let's look at some actual video examples of snakes behavior. I'm going to be showing the same snake and I'm gonna be showing two separate videos of the same snake. They'll be preceded by a slide that will give you the snake's name and it will say, not hungry, hungry. And then I'll show you two videos. The first video will be of the snake's body language when they're not hungry or when I'm not worried about going in the enclosure and doing maintenance or water changes because I don't think that they are in feeding mode. And then you'll see a second video which will be the snakes when they are definitely in feeding mode and they're exhibiting body language that is telling me I'm hungry. So watch very closely and I hope this helps you. Example one is Tilly. She is a two and a half year old Morelia Bradley. She's a female. And in this first video, you can see her way up high on her ledge at the back of her enclosure. It's early evening, I'm getting ready to turn out their daylights and I'm refilling or refreshing her water. And as you can see here, she isn't paying too much attention to me at all. This is the same snake Tilly on a different evening. I've just turned out her daylights and I wanted to give her some new water and I wasn't completely sure that she was going to allow that based on her ambush position and the movements that she was making in relation to the movements of my hand. I tested her out and decided that I would wait and do her water a different evening. This is Shepard. He is a six-month-old Morelia Bradley, and in this first video, I've already filled his water. He's relaxed and chilled out on that perch. And here is a different evening when I would like to give him water, and he is coiled around his water dish. And he is, with every move I make, coming closer and closer towards me and towards the door. So he did not get fresh water just then. Example three is Katesh. She is a six-month-old Morelia Bradley. And in this video, I have already given her fresh water there at the back and she didn't want to have anything to do with me. She turned away in the opposite direction of the door and she just looked away from me and stayed that way the whole time I refreshed her water. This is Katesh on a different evening when she's at her door and she has soiled the edge of her water dish here and I was going to reach in and take the whole water dish out to clean it. And I changed my mind because she was coming down towards the door in my hand as if she wanted to eat. And so I made the decision based on her body language to just wait and do her water at a different time. This next example is a three-year-old corn snake named Naroon, and I always test him out by just walking across the room and up to the front of his enclosure to watch his behavior. And here he's stretched out along a perch under his UVB, and he isn't making any moves towards the door or really moving his head in my direction at all. He's just relaxed and comfortable. And then in this next video, I approach, I do the same thing, and you will see that 
At first, I thought he was just relaxed and stretched out across the front of his enclosure, but then when I started to open the door, he came at the front very quickly, and you can see via his body language and his quick head movements that he is wondering if I am going to feed him, and he is thinking about food. Example five is candy corn. She is an adult corn snake, and this is her when she's not hungry. I know you don't see her and you won't. She's extremely shy and she remains hidden. In fact, when I first got her, I never saw her and I would leave her food in the enclosure and come back later and it would be gone. This is now, after being with us a couple of years, candy corn when she is hungry. She actually sticks her nose out of hiding and the reason that I know that she's improving and that she is actually hungry is she is tongue flicking. She is not retreating as I get closer and closer to her. And in fact, she's coming out a little bit further the closer I get to her. So this is a huge step for her as far as her habituation to people, but it's also a huge indication that she is hungry. Now I want you to tell me if you think this snake, a moon, is hungry or not, and if you think he's in feed mode or not. I was trying to give him water. It was very low light conditions, and I just grabbed my phone to get some footage of him in this position and get some footage of his behavior as I was trying to fill his water dish. So what do you guys think, hungry or not? Here's another one for you, hungry or not. This is yearling Morelia Bradley Quince. His door is open, I spot cleaned, I gave him fresh water. What do you think? Here's an example of one of the processes I go through when I'm determining if I'm gonna feed a snake or not. And this goes along with behavior-based feeding. Merlin is a four-year-old, four-and-a-half-year-old inland carpet python. He's not super active, he's moderately active within his enclosure, but he doesn't seek to come out a lot. He likes to sit at his enclosure threshold a lot. But when I really see him moving around a lot at the doorway and pushing on the door and reacting a lot to my hand movements when I'm around, that's a little bit unusual for him. And for this particular animal, I know that when he starts to do this behavior several nights in a row, it usually means that I need to check if he needs to eat. And so he has been out and at his enclosure door and really seeking for me to open it for several nights in a row. So tonight, I pulled his card and I looked at when and what he last ate. And he last ate a rat pup about a month ago. And so he legitimately probably needs to eat again now. And I also look within his enclosure to see if he's eliminated since his last feeding, which I see that he has. I notice how much water he's had to drink. And I obviously eliminate other reasons that he might want out. And when I've done that, and then looked at the totality of the circumstances, his behavior, his increased activity, his increased desire for me to open the door and let him out, the fact that he's eliminated, and the fact that it's been about a month since he ate and his last meal was very small, I'm going to feed him tonight. And that's kind of the process that I go through with my behavior-based feeding. I look at a whole bunch of factors, including how much exercise the animal has gotten in since his last feed, and then all of those other things I just mentioned to decide whether I'm going to feed the animal or not. And so Merlin is going to get to come out and eat tonight because all of those factors are sort of lining up to tell me it's time to feed him.